Okay, um, I want to start off with saying uh, Shalom, and I of course want to give all praises unto Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai, uh, Yahweh, who the world ignorantly calls God, and Yahweh Shai, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. Um, I'm just gonna do a little video. Um, I'm gonna entitle this something along the lines of "What is Heaven and Hell According to the Bible?" Because there is a misconception around, uh, which it's been around for hundreds of years. Um, it pretty much it's going to be long. It's going to be here um, pretty much forever until the end of the world. All right. Or I guess one could say it's it's a uh, a tale of a fable um, uh, that, that stretches around from from all time, all time, from the beginning of mankind to this current day that you're watching this video. This belief has uh, has literally stretched all over the planet. All the way from now, you know, stretching all the way from not this, just the church and, and television and and, and uh, uh, comedians, but now you see it even when you're driving your damn car down the street. You can you see the signs on the side of the street. I've seen a couple of them that say, where are you going when you die, heaven or hell? And that's exactly what we're going to talk about here. Um it is true that the word heaven and the word hell are mentioned in the Holy Scriptures. However, with this being said, it is not the teaching that the Christian church teaches. It's a, uh, another breakdown, okay? It's a correct breakdown. Um, that they'll use certain things, like say for an example, uh, Luke, the 16th chapter, dealing with um, the Lazarus and the rich man, and say, well, see, hell has to be real. Well, as we all know Christ spoke in parables. So Lazarus and the rich man was simply a parable. It was not a literal event that happened or is going to happen. Okay. Um, let's see. Um, let's deal with heaven first. In the Bible, there is three heavens. Um, Isaiah, say for an example, uh, Isaiah, the 14th chapter it says, uh, Lucifer, how have thou fallen from heaven? Um, the heaven that Lucifer fell from, which if you know the scriptures, uh, the Lucifer is simply referring to, in that chapter, Luc Lucifer is referring to the, the king of Babylon, uh, which that's talking about modern Babylon, uh, which is America, by the way. Um, but that seat of, of, of authority or rulership is, is that kingdom, that heaven that, that Lucifer fell from in Isaiah, the 14th chapter. Uh, there's another heaven which is the sky that I see above me, the blue sky. That is, um, that's another heaven. Okay, that's heaven. And there is a third heaven where the Most High um, and the, the Holy Angels are located. Okay, now where is that exactly? Well, nobody can really know the answer to that question. Um, but the point of the matter is going by the scriptures, we see there are three heavens. One, rulership. Okay, being a king over a, a kingdom is a, a place of, 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 I guess one could call heaven. Okay, the second heaven, which is the sky above. Okay, and the, uh, the third heaven, which is where the Most High is, uh, is at. Those are the three heavens in the scriptures. Say, for an example, how can I prove this? Um, what is that? The book of Amos. I believe it's five and nine. I could be mistaken. Um, but it's in Amos. It speaks about how, how, uh, how men, they um, they climbed up to heaven. Though they climb up to heaven, I shall bring thee down, is what it says. So according to the Christian doctrine, if, if heaven is one place, well, how can man build the heaven? As in where the Most High is, you can't do that. So that by default proves that heaven has to be the sky. And in the same chapter, in the same chapter, uh, it's like you, in the same chapter, in the same verse, just under that, it says, and though they dig into hell, Thence shall my hand take them, nearly paraphrasing the scripture. So why why is that so important? That proves that hell cannot be a physical place, because how can man dig into hell? Which most people teach that hell is underneath us right now, that, you know, miles and miles down, which truthfully, man can only dig uh, roughly eight miles down. You can't get down under eight miles. You just, you can't do it. And you can do your research to back up my statement. OK, they got a movie out there. I believe it's called Nine Miles Down. I haven't seen it, but I heard it's a good movie. Uh, basically about how I believe it's about how hell they they say that hell's uh, 
you know, all the way down there, nine miles underground or something like that. Uh, I've heard it's a good movie. I might go ahead and check it out. Uh, but the main point of mentioning this is the vast majority of people believe that hell is right underneath us all. You know, however miles down, however many miles down, I should say. Uh, you know, they also say and they teach in schools that, you know, the center of the earth is um, is basically just molten rock, right? Heat down there, like lava and whatnot, which that's just a conspiracy. Um, that's truthfully just a belief because nobody's ever been there before. So how could you say something like that if you've never been there? Nobody's ever been to the center of the earth. So how could one say what is in there if you yourself never been there? You can speculate on what you believe is down there. Just like the whole hell thing. They can say hell's down there, but nobody's ever going to know that. Um, which who knows? Could hell be down there right now? I suppose it could. But again, according to the scriptures, that's not true. Okay. Um, and how can I prove that hell, what is hell according to the Bible? Okay, we already discussed what heaven is, uh, which also let me address this. Yes, there will be a kingdom of heaven, right? The kingdom of Christ that is going to be built on the earth. That is true. Okay, after after Babylon goes down, which is America, there will be a kingdom called heaven that will be built upon the earth. So one could call that heaven. Okay, one could call that the uh, the, the heaven in the scriptures. Okay, so that's another heaven that has not yet come. Okay, um, now hell, what is hell in the Bible? When you read the Bible, whatever it mentions the word hell, it almost always can be interpreted to mean a, um, a, a, a state of being and, and suffering or um, the grave. And I'm going to give a couple examples. You might hear some people say that, oh, I'm, I'm catching so much hell. Well, that's a true statement. And that's according to the Bible what hell is. A state of suffering, as in not in a literal place like the church teaches, but a place uh, of, say, poverty. Okay? Uh, poverty, that's that's hell. Okay? Having no money. Uh, let me ask this question. Uh, Jonah chapter 2 and verse 2. Now, we all know the story of Jonah, so my question would be, if you read Jonah chapter 2 and verse 2, Jonah said that he cried to the Lord out of the belly of hell. So my question would be, is if hell is a physical place... Well, then, was Jonah actually in hell, or was he in a fish, according to the story? So, now we know that he was in a fish, which I'm hoping that's the answer you gave to that question. Um, and if, if you did not, well, <laughs> you better go back and study. Um, well, with that being said, now we know that hell isn't literal, because Jonah called the belly of fish hell, as in a, a place of suffering. Okay, as in the state of mourning. As what is hell is, according to the Bible. Uh, another example, let's say um, uh, tw uh, Revelation chapter 20 and verse 14, and death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. So my question is, if the lake of fire is um, is hell according to the Christian church, well, how can hell, a physical lake of fire, right, hell, how can hell be thrown into hell itself? That's not logical. That's an illogical fallacy. Um, the real answer to the question of what it's talking about is... Um, that hell, as in suffering, was cast into the lake of fire, which the lake of fire is simply referring to uh, Babylon the Great when it's taken down. All right, John saw uh, just a city on fire. That's that's what it's talking about. Uh, as I said, the Christian church doesn't know this information. Now, they teach it that's actually, you know, uh, uh, in another dimension or something that's not yet in, in, in existence, I guess we could say. That's what the church teaches, what they're going off with their teachings. Um, let me see. I'll, I'll handle where we go when we die. That all, that'll be another topic. Um, let's see, anything else I can use to prove my point? Oh, uh, I will go into this though. Um, for those of you who made it this far, put hashtag ETT in the comment section down below. Um, one more thing I will handle to disprove hell is the Bible says that everybody goes to the same place after you die. This is in the book of Ecclesiastes. Uh, I believe it's in the third chapter. I could be mistaken. But if you read Ecclesiastes, there's a verse that says um, that the spirit of a man goes upward, but the spirit of a beast goes downwards. Now, my question would be, is if hell was real, does that mean that the spirit of an animal goes to hell, but the spirit of an, a man goes to heaven? According to that scripture, you have to agree with that, or you have to admit 
that there is no hell, okay? That's clearly how you would explain that. Second, um, let's see. Um, Job, the third chapter, it speaks about what happens when you die. Job wished he was dead for the you know suffering that he was uh was going through, and he said he then he goes into describing what would happen if he was dead, and he described a place where um where the wicked they cease from troubling. It says they're they're the good and the, and the wicked they they rest together. That's what Job the third chapter says. Okay, you can read that yourself to get a a proper understanding of um uh um of what's the word I'm looking for of the scriptures. As I said, man, you know, a lot of you guys watching, a lot of you never read the Bible front to back before. Okay, which I'm not boasting about myself, but I've have read the scriptures front to back. Okay. So, you know, if 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 you do that, man, you're gonna realize something. That what we've been told in these churches, man, this isn't that's not true. That's not in line with these scriptures. And again, I speak from experience because I used to be a Catholic and a Seventh-day Adventist. I was brought up in both those churches. But Christianity isn't the truth, man. Okay, the, the doctrine of the church is wrong, according to the Bible. Okay, the Bible is true. That, that is true, that, that Christ was real, right? Uh, uh, the Son of the Most High, to, who died for the sins of Israel. Um, and, you know, the whole Bible is true. Okay, but with that being said, the, the, the Christian church has a perversion of what the, the, the Bible says. Okay, um, but anyway, with that being said, I'm going to say shalom.